All right, Wayne Bettis here, the founder of the Off The Tools podcast. I just want to introduce you to our brand new sponsor, directplumbingsupplies.com. It is founded by a former tradesman who has set up his own plumbing and heating merchants. He has an online shop, which is obviously at directplumbingsupplies.com, and he delivers across the UK. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. You are now listening to Off The Tools with the one and only Wayne Bettis. If you're passionate and driven and focused in what you do, people will take notice. You you, you can achieve anything you want to achieve. The excuses are not valid. Welcome to the next episode of the Off The Tools podcast. Today, I have a gentleman that you guys are going to love. A lot of you may have already seen him. Uh, He's on social media quite a bit, and uh, he's a a real good time guy. Winston Davis, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Wayne? You right? Yeah, man. It's such a pleasure to actually sit and and talk to you even though it's via zoom you know just to see that big old smile on your face it, you know you just can't help you just ooze like positivity i love it um uh, i try i try but for those that don't know you or, or maybe don't know who you are can you just like introduce yourself in like who you are where you've come from yeah um quick wind down so yeah um brought up brought up single parent family um me my brother sister uh, went to went to school, <laughs> got an education, uh, went to university, got a degree. Um, but whilst I was doing that, I was you know involved in um, drinking, drugs, fighting, just just not not uh, following the right path. But as well as doing my education, and um, basically like the duality of that ended up with me getting a graduate uh, training um, scheme. And I got sacked from there. And then four months later, I was in a maximum security prison. Um, so <laughs> that was so that was like the, that was like the, the the end of my my childhood, if you want to call it, or early early adulthood. And then from that, I did a I did a, a course when I was away uh, in gas engineering. And then from that, I just run with it when I got out um, and ended up after a few years, I had like twenty guys working for me, built up a, a decent business, doing a lot of commercial stuff and large res. And then, um, and then 2017, so three years ago, I lost that business, um, okay. just out of control. Um, and then literally like, yeah, just on literally almost a few months later, I was like, right, we've got to go again. And, um, and I have yeah, just built it back up again. Um, and alongside doing my business, I like to try and give back. Um, you know, I'm, I'm married, I've got three sons. Um, one of my sons I don't see. I had to stop seeing him last year. I made the decision to stop seeing him. So that, therefore, I've been doing a lot of like uh, campaigning for fathers' rights and parental alienation awareness. Um, I squeeze in a bit of acting on the side. Um, <laughs> in, in, the, in the summer, I become a, a chairman of a, a charity which helps disadvantaged uh, boys with leadership and educational development training. Um, and yeah, just generally, it's like the whole thing for me is about how much do we need? Yeah, I need to earn money for my family. Yeah, I need to earn a living. But once I've I've I've, I've secured that, who can I help, and who can I who can I reach back to? Yeah, that's, that's kind of my philosophy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> where do we Where do we start then? Uh, <laughs> okay, I think this might be a long one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so sit back, everybody, and enjoy because I've got I've got from from a personal perspective. Do you know, I mm. want to hear this. I want to learn more about you because. I, I watch what you what you do and what you're about. We've had conversations in the past, mm. um, so this is this is from a selfish point of view, you know, valuable <laughs> to me as well to hear to hear what, you, what the the answer to the questions that I want to ask about. So I'm going to rewind a little bit here. And yeah, sure. I didn't know you went to university. So, oh, okay. What was you studying at university then? What like <laughs> how, how did that happen? Um, so so that happened because I did I did my A levels. Yeah, and I and I didn't put any effort into GCSEs or A levels, but I squeezed through A levels. Didn't get okay. great grades, but I just squeezed through it. And then the year I then didn't do anything for a year, 
And after about three, four months, I found myself like reading bottle tops and, and you know, head and shoulders packets in the bathroom. Just and my mind realized that my mind was like needed to do something. Yeah. So then I was like, right, do you know what? Let's go and study. Let's go and go and go to get a um, university. And but how I come about doing it, I've got a degree in psychology and marketing. But how that come about was I like business, obviously been involved in business since I've been a, a child. And then um, one of my friends said to me, um, he's at university. And I said, what are you studying? He said, I'm doing psychology. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And he goes, yeah, well, I'm one of two guys out of a class of 50. And I was like, ah, oh. so you've got 40 yeah, girls in your, uh, in your year. So I ended up taking psychology thinking that would be a good way to meet girls. Um, <laughs> but, but, um, but actually, funnily enough, by the end of the time of doing the degree, I realized that psychology, I loved it even more so than the business. And I, and I really like took to it, but it took me nearly four years to actually understand that. So okay. yeah, so that was it. Marketing psychology. That was, uh, that was my degree. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's really interesting. I, d- I didn't, I didn't know about that. And, and I guess maybe is that the, the psychological stuff that you, that maybe is that why you help the disadvantaged young people? Is it because you get an understanding of like maybe what, what their minds are, are doing and going through is, is that something um i think that i've been interested in human beings like in terms of our behavior and our psychology yeah. from a from a young age i've always been people watching i've always been interested in what people are doing and and yeah. i think like from my childhood i think like i took to acting as a, as a child because it, it enabled me to i don't know escape reality but also yeah. to, to to live and explore other people's uh, realities and um I think that the psychology, when I, was, I did it, I then started understanding little things about myself and my history and, and the world. And I was just like, wow. And, and then from that, that gave me more of an, un, an understanding, like more theoretically. But then when I was actually living it, I could then link it back to the, to the theory of it. Yeah. Um, and then I think as I just got older, having that awareness, then it's like, you know what? That's what that not, it's not why, but it, how can I can I reach back un, with the understanding that I've got? Yeah, yeah, no, no, makes that makes sense. That makes sense. We're gonna we're gonna come back to the the stuff that you're that you're doing in the community and that yeah, a bit yeah. further down the line. I want to try and like timeline the the the, the interview sure, if that sure. makes sense. So sure. You, you mentioned quite a big thing um, that you were in a maximum security prison. So, <laughs> one, <laughs> how the hell did that happen from university <laughs> to, to prison? Yeah. Um, and shit, man, what was it like being incarcerated like that? You know, I, I'm thankfully I've never, apart from the odd night, like a drunken night, I've, I've yeah. never been in a cell. So, can yeah. you, whatever, obviously, I know it's personal and, and the stuff that you probably don't want to share, but whatever. Just yeah, just just sort of take us through what what happened. Yeah, I mean, like this is the thing. Like I said, I as at the start, like I was living a, a sort of a duality of life. Like I was at university, but at the weekend I was still going out, getting up to mischief, you know, if yeah. you want to call it that. And and it's kind of, I I I thought that as a as a young man, like I said, I didn't have a father around. As a young man, I thought being being a man meant to be to be like that guy oh i'm 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 the man yeah but don't understand that that that's so like shallow and and never will fulfill you so for me it's like i was living a kind of caricature kind of life based on what i thought i should be doing and based on uh, you know, I was a, I was basically grew up to be a young, an angry young man based upon the the sort of experiences I had as a as a child, and it's like I was reacting to that and and playing out a lot of um, a lot of dramas that that I I was just allowing myself to have, which had I had different guidance, maybe I wouldn't have chosen the decisions that I did. So yeah. so I was. Like I said, I was going to university and I got this graduate training scheme, but I said at the same time, I still had these lot of these hit, whole like hang ups and issues that were coming from my past, which I, I just couldn't deal with and didn't understand how to deal with at the time. So I ended up losing my job in, I was living in Belfast and I was working in, as an, an account manager in Belfast. And I lost that position a lot because of my ego. You know, one of the senior uh, men in the, um, a company said to me, yeah, can you uh, just pick up the paper that's on the floor? There was some paper that was on the floor and could you just, you know, tidy it up? And I'm like, I'm paid to be an account manager. I'm not going to pick up your, your trash. I'm not a cleaner. Mm-hmm. And 
that confrontation ended up literally getting me the sack like the next day. Wow. Um, I think it was in the same day, maybe. And, and I was back to England. Um, and, and then, you know, a few months later, um, I'm not earning any money. And, you know, I've got a friend who's saying, you know, you can earn some money. You just got to, you know, drive from A to B. And I'm like, well, do you know what? Cool. So I get in the, I get, get this rental car. I, I get in it. I drive to a spot, boxes and boxes, 30 kilos of skunker loaded into the front seat, back seat, boot of this car. And um, I start driving off, driving along, listening to some of my music, relaxing. And all of a sudden, like, I look in the rear view mirror and I'm like, oh, that's police, like five cars back. And I'm thinking, nah, it's nothing for me. Just relax, you know, just chilling, taking it easy. And then they get like four cars, three cars, two cars back. And then I'm like, oh, man, do you know what? This is not good. And then all of a sudden, they're one car behind me. And I'm like, oh, nah. And that was it. All of a sudden, I'm boxed in. Four or five cars come from nowhere. And literally the next day, I'm shipped off to, to um, HMP Woodhill. You know, it's like, it's, and it's, yeah, it's, it's like. It's How old was you at that point? 25. 25. Just turned, just turned 25. Mm. You know, it's like a complete, like, just a like, flip of reality. You're just sitting there. Like I said, like, the first day I, I woke up, um, in prison, I like walked out onto the landing and I looked down onto the other like inmates that were going around and I'm just like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> like, how's it, how's this happened? Like, I just couldn't get my mind around it. I was just like, you know, one minute you think life's going well and the next minute, bang in the air. So, uh, so yeah, that's how I ended up there. Jesus. And, and, uh, how long, how long was you inside for? So they tried to give me eight years um and then because of an early guilty plea and uh, mitigation i got it down to three okay. um so you know and i was obviously really happy ab- about that but obviously even even three years oh that's not a long time but when you're doing that every day and you're counting down the days and weeks and months like and you're and and like people say oh you know it's it's not a long time but when you start missing things and, and you can't, you don't actually think about it if you're not there, but you start missing like the, the funerals of close people to you. If they're yeah. not direct family, you can't go. You're missing the births of people that, are, you know, family members around you, if your sister or your brother or someone's having a, a, a family a birth, you're missing that. You're missing all these little things, which, yeah. which just signify to you, you know, what's going on outside there and your life's basically standing still as everyone else is moving on. So, you know, anytime that someone does locked up, is tough and it's and i think the main thing for for a bit is that you lose your identity you're no longer even you're no longer wayne yeah you're you're you know you're you're just you're just a number w wd5872 you know or, or just just going to call you by your surname you right. know your first name's gone you know you don't you don't exist you know you just got to conform to this system and so so yeah, so that's how I got there. So and, how, how uh, did it go in prison then? Because obviously you said you were like doing some dodgy stuff and obviously you, mm. you got caught for, for something yeah. that, that was bad. Um, mm. When you was in prison then, like, that, that, was, you, was you keeping your nose clean or was you, was you involved yeah. in things in prison? No, 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 no. I think for me, um, going to prison was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. The best thing. And what, I think it goes back to saying, I think I was very fortunate and blessed to have my education and the, the thinking which I'd done before there, although I wasn't able to execute on the things that I was learning, I had that still in my brain, that was still in my mind. And um, like when I said I woke up that first morning, and I asked that question, you know, what, what's this all about? I asked that question to myself every day, like, what am I here for? And more yeah. to the point is, what am I meant to learn from this? And when you start asking yourself questions like that, when you're put in like situations which really could easily be life or that every day you're seeing people that are getting TVs slammed into their heads and, you know, snooker balls smashed into their faces and whatever else you're seeing, you're seeing it firsthand. Um, you're seeing people coming back from, from court and they're getting one guy got 44 years in prison, oh. you know, and you're seeing it. And like, you know, so when you see the, the, the baseline of, 
our society of what people will call the, the you know they want to call it the dregs or the you know the the, the toughest place you're going to be in the, our country like it really is a rude awakening and actually by me, me asking questions what is this all about i was able to start understanding things which i never would have considered about myself about how myself fits with other people about the world generally because like you see when you're when you're when you're locked away and you've got no identity you've got nothing you see everyone naked almost you know because we have nothing so you're seeing human for human and the lesson that you can take from that about how people behave and you know like when when to when to push back on someone when to pull back from someone like these are lessons which you, like were invaluable you know yeah. it's like you you push someone too far you know the next day you can come and have your face sliced open but if you don't but if you don't push back on someone the next day you could have your trousers down your ankles, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, literally. It's, so it's, it's about like, learning that, that, that balancing act between what, what is, where, where to stop and where to start. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm. So, and also, so, I, go on. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Can I carry on? No, I was just gonna say one other, one other key thing, which was a, a, a crazy thing for me to, to comprehend is that to learn that not everyone's going to like you. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, and that's okay. You know, for first I was like, Oh, why do I not say hello? Why, why, what, you know, why are they so off? Why, why don't, why don't they, why, cause I, you know, before that I'd just been surrounded by people who I, I thought like me and we had a relationship yeah. with, but when you realize that not everyone's going to like you and not everyone's going to be your, your person, you kind of go, okay, cool. Well, who is it that, who is my, who are, who is going to be my people and who's going to be my tribe? Yeah. Who's going to be my pack. And when yeah. you can identify that, it's just easy because then you say, I can, I can keep to my pack. And if anybody else wants to engage with me, cool. But if they don't, again, that's equally okay. Yeah. And that comes down to like raw human nature, doesn't it? I suppose mm. is, is we're, we're a pack animal by, by mm. nature, by, by definition. Mm. So mm. A, a lot of people, even though you are obviously your case was extreme, but mm. in life people mm. find their pack. You go to, school you find the groups of kids that that 100%. suit what you are about um and yeah that's that's an interesting take on it and i just you know i just couldn't ever imagine touch wood i never have to face it you know <laughs> being being locked up in that in a place like that just waking up mm. every morning and and like you you explained it amazingly when you said like you stripped of who you are you you you're just this mm. this number <laughs> that mm. that's standing there each day and mm. and did I catch that you did? Was it the prison system that retrained you then? It was that part yeah, of the rehabilitation so, program and stuff, was it? So, or? Yeah, so this is this is the thing, right? Look, um, I understand you know, prison is needed if someone's done something wrong, they need to be yeah. punished, and this the, that's the way our society punishes people. But the, the reality of this is this if people don't want to rehabilitate and people don't want to take any opportunities to change their lives or to get on in life, the prison system does not care. The prison system yeah. will leave you sat, and sat there doing nothing. And that I know of and know so many people that just go to prison, waste four, five, six, seven, ten years of their life doing nothing, you know, smoking weed still and doing just doing nothing, and then come out and repeat the cycle again. Yeah. And reality of it is, yeah, they do these, like, token courses you know, to tick box, to say, you've done this course, you've done that course, you've done that course, oh, you're re rehabilitated, you can, move, you can move on. But again, another lesson was for me was that before going to jail, I just felt like everything would fall into my lap. I was good at, I was academically smart, so I did well in, in, in secondary school. I didn't try for my GCSEs, I, I breezed them. I didn't try for my A-levels, I scraped it. I didn't, I put a little bit of effort into my, my degree. I, I passed it. But when I went to prison, it was the first time I was like, wow, I failed. Yeah. Like, wow, I have failed and I can fail. So actually, if I'm going to change my situation, it's down to me to take control of my circumstances where I am and to take action to change what my future is going to be. So then when I found out about this gas course that was at an open prison, which I was going to hopefully be going to, I straight away, like a couple of months before I got there, I was like, right, that's what I'm going to do. That's a really good opportunity. That's a really yeah. good way to broaden my skill set. That's what I'm going to do. And, and I had it in my head 
to go and do that course. And as soon as I got there, I was on their case and they were saying, oh, we well, overqualified. Why do you want to do this course? And I'll say, no, I think that, you know, it could be some value that I can bring from my education to doing something physically with my hands. And ultimately, they let me onto the course. So, yeah, it was part of my rehabilitation. And since then, in my previous company, I've employed probably about, I say probably only a handful, about six or seven guys during, during while they were on the course, because you have to come okay. out to do, do you have to come out to do training? Once you've yeah. got your, your, your initial training there, you then have to go out in real life and get training. So what I was doing was I had my last company. We were working on big sites. I was bringing some of those guys to the sites to train. And actually, a crazy, not even crazy, but really interesting, actually one of the things I'm really proud of is that out of all of the guys that I allowed to come train in my company, not one of them is, has uh, re-offended. And I'm talking, wow. about, I'm talking about guys that were serial, real, real big-time criminals. One of them was a, in a... A South London gang. I was involved in a shooting and and, did, and got got. Um, I think it was thirteen years. The first time he went away, and he'd served like seven before he got out. And then he was out for a year. Got caught up in some um, drugs thing, and then got ten years for a drugs offence. So he ended up serving nearly thirteen years by the time he come to work for me, working yeah. on new new build houses. And since then, him and, and another guy that come to work with me, they've gone off together, started a business, and they yeah. go out. Yeah, and they've got their own oh. business. And, they, and the other guy was in for 10 years as well. And these guys have not reoffended. They've been given opportunity, and they've run with it. So yeah. it goes back to what I'm saying is, if you want it, and this is a lesson in life, if you really want it, you can go and get it. If you really want to make a change, you can make a change. And, yeah. and, and the examples of seeing these guys doing what they've done really has inspired me because I'm like, wow, you know, it's like so many examples of, the, of people who would have been written off in society, who have been written off in society. You know, I've read articles about these guys, you know, and they're like meant to be the worst of the worst. Yet given the right opportunities and respect and, and chance to redeem themselves, as it were, like they've gone on and, and, and run with it. So you, this, this, is the, this is what annoys me about th this, this sort of country, social media and the news, because we don't hear these stories. We, all we hear is the repeat offender, the guys in and out of prison. You, know, you don't mm. get to hear the success stories, do we? Do you mm. know? So mm. everyone sits there and, and says, oh, the prison system don't work. These rehabil rehabilitation programs don't mm. help. Mm. when reality it, it you know it saved Clip, you Clip. it sounds like you've helped them followed that on and saved yeah. other people or let them yeah. give, give them the opportunity to save themselves should i say yeah 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 exactly um, that. you know yeah. and this leads me lovely onto um a mutual friend of ours etan asked a question that he wanted me to ask right okay yeah yeah about the practicalities of someone that has a criminal record you know mm. Mm. the practicalities of getting a qualification and going into business like with regards mm -hmm. to obviously insurances setting up a business as a criminal mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. a convicted criminal how how do you, <laughs> former, how do you former. yeah sorry sorry <laughs> <laughs> um like how do you over how does that side of it like the like work because obviously at the end of the day yeah. it's on your record isn't it yeah yeah it's on your record i mean firstly etan shout out to you uh top guy yeah um so i think it just comes down to this it's like um, you have to have a, a massive drive in you to firstly want to make a change yeah. because just, just because you've done a course or just because you've, you know, you're, uh, you, you've served your time, that doesn't give you any right or any rights. So when I, when I got out, I was like, you know what, it's up to me to do what I need to do to prove that I'm worthy of of my place back into society yeah i've served the time but now what can i actually go and do about that and when i first got out i was trying to uh get a job couldn't get a job for love nor money literally yeah. couldn't get a job and, and was after, that was that based on the record basically was yeah, it well because, yeah i mean like, i i had i had a tag on my ankle so <laughs> I, okay, so geez. i was yeah. so so i was talking to to uh people in interviews and I'm, you know, I mean, I'm straight up and I've always been yeah. straight up. So when I'm in an interviews, I'm actually saying, look, the only thing is in terms of working, I've got to be out of here by six because 
by seven o'clock, my, my tag's going to go off. And um, obviously, it's not the greatest um, interview mm, yeah. uh, tactic. So, um, so I couldn't get a job. But eventually, what I did, I, um, I knew of a company that was doing um, like council work in East London. Okay. And they were just basically house bashing, new, new rads, central heat and whatever. And I, I contacted, them, contacted them through uh, people that I knew at the company to say, you know, I, I want to work. Can you let me work? And they was like, no, nah, I've got no, no positions open. Um, and they had, I don't know, 15, 20 people working. And I, when a guy come back and said, oh, no, nah, sorry, they can't. They, they haven't got any space for you. I said, please, go back to them. Tell them I want to come and work for free. I don't want any money. I just want to work. So I went there and, and I was like 15 stone at the time. Like I've been pumping, eating lots of potatoes and that. And I turned up on site the first day. And in my head, I was like, this is my chance. This is my chance to prove to this company here that I'm worth something and that I deserve a chance. And I worked, literally, I worked my nuts off. And for a month, I didn't get paid a penny. And I was running, like, I was just a runner, you know. And I was running from the bathroom guy to the boiler guy to the rads guy to the toilet guy to the cylinder guy. So everyone is in it, because literally, they're like, in these houses, there's like six, seven guys yeah. crammed in. And I'm just literally on it. And I'm like running, oh, what do you need? What do you need? And I'm really working hard. And after a month, the owner was like, do you know what? I can't not pay you. I've got to pay you something. <laughs> and so, I, so I was like, yeah, okay, cool. I said, and um, I said, whatever. And he's like, okay, I'm going to give you £40 a day. So I was like, fine. That'll cover my, my fare and that'll cover my um, – because I, I was catching a train and a tube and a DLR to get wow. there. With with uh, I went and talk, bought one tool bag with my tools in it, which was getting heavier and heavier as people started donating tools to me. Um, and I used to catch catch the, the, the you know public transport, so the forty pound covered that covered some food. Did that for another five months, um, and and then from there that's when I went and did my exams. So so if anyone that's trying to to you know start again. Like you've got to really show that you want it and like yeah. really show people that you mean business. Yeah. You know, that, that's fascinating to hear. Cause it, it, it mirrors something that my, my dad did. He, right. he, he wasn't in the same position as you, but he had sure. lost his job. He'd only ever had this one job as a hat maker. We're from Luton. So stereotype yeah, yeah. hat makers. <laughs> um, and basically he worked with, I was working for somebody else at the time and he worked for six months for free. Didn't take a, like, didn't. Mm. And, Based on that hard work, the company gave him a job, gave him a, a 30 plus grand a year job with a van, mm. you know, the minute he got qualified. And, and the lesson from both of them stories are that you have to do something, you know, you have to do something to, to, to force the change, don't you? Does that make sense? 100%. 100%. Like, the thing is this, if you're not bringing, okay, look, in our, in our industry, when someone starts working for you, someone start working for either of us today. Yep. If they can't do anything, they can't hang a rad. They can't pipe up a rag. They can't do something. They can't add any value to what we do. If they can come and they can work really, really hard and they can pass tools and they can you know, work around tidying things up and they're quick, then you go, okay, right, well, I can give them something because they're adding a little bit. They're making the main guy's job easier. So I can yeah. give them something. So until you can bring value, what, how are you going to get paid? Yeah. So my thing was build up my value and my worth and then people will want to pay you. Um, and, and then so, I mean, going back to Etan's question about the insurances and things like that is, so I, what I did was luckily at the time there was a company called Fresh Start and they specifically did insurance um, services for people that had criminal convictions. Mm -hmm. And I was able to say to them, look, this is what it is. This is, this is where I'm at. What can you do? Yeah, I paid a massive premium for like five years, but I was able to get my insurances. So yeah. from from that point of view, I was able just to put it out there and and just got on with got on with working. Um, so other than, other than the insurances, there wasn't really any like I didn't feel any different to myself and anybody else because once yeah. I was qualified, once I had my insurance, I had my little van. I was like, okay, it's game on. You know, what, what are we doing now? So, you know, so logistically, uh, there wasn't really any barriers to me. The only things that I saw a barrier was my skill set and my knowledge base, which had come from zero. You know, people bash these six-week courses. And I, I think that 
in a lot of ways, yeah, do you know what? You're right, definitely, because you need a foundation of knowledge to be able to go off. But at the same time, if somebody is doing a course like that, but then diligently studying, diligently working with really good people, then you're able to to move on yeah. quickly. You definitely. know, and especially especially being an older I say older, you know, mid twenties and there's not old, but in terms of apprentices that are sixteen, so being ten years later, you're an older person that's getting into the industry, you know, doing a doing a course like that is what was available to me at the time. So I took yeah. it and I ran with it. And the mad thing is that the people that were in the um the people that were in the company that I worked for for free, they used to say to me, because they knew me from before, they was like, Winston, why are you working so hard? You know, lunch breaks and stuff. They were having lunch breaks and I'm like having a sip of water and carrying on. They're like, why don't you stop? What, what's all this about? But they didn't understand. Like they used to laugh and think that I was a madman, but they didn't understand that I had a target in my head. I had a, a mission to accomplish. And like, I really, you know, after being locked up for so long, you're like, listen, I'd do anything rather than be locked up, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so getting a bucket of, um, tank water which you know your guy's been weeing in on all day while he's doing the tank in the loft to getting that <laughs> dropped in your face which is a true story <laughs> getting that dropped in your face you know the catch went on the hoover and uh, you know it's like that's that's fine i'll get on with it but the thing <laughs> is is that about three four years later i'd set up my own business and since th that company opened probably about i don't know six or seven of people that were working in the previous company had come to work for me at some point either for a short period or for a year or two years, they had worked for me. So then it's kind of like, goes back to that. If, you, if you're if you so focused, you can leapfrog people yeah. who are just who are just sort of not not got the same level of intensity, you know? Yeah, no, no, that's, that's, a, that's a, uh, fascinating to hear, you know, and, and, to, and to see a real life example of that transformation, you know. Mm. It's, you, 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 so let's move on a little bit. So let's get yeah. a bit more positive away from the prison and, and, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you built up a business. So it's a positive and a negative, I guess, because uh, <laughs> then you had a bit of ups and downs. So yeah, um, what happened there then? So like, obviously, you by now you've qualified. You've, you're mm. out on your own. Do you know, mm. shit's going well, obviously. So yeah. I'll leave it with you. Take, take, take yeah. me from there. So yeah, I mean, so it took me about. So about three years, and about two years, and then I just decided I could see there were a lot of good engineers, a lot of good people who were really good at their job, but I could also see a lot of them didn't have a clue about business, yeah. didn't have a clue about sales, you know, running a business, what to do in terms of gaining business, what to form a business, branding. They don't understand it. So I was just like, well, if I could bring my educational knowledge with the knowledge that I've learned in terms of to, to in the heating industry and plumbing industry, well, actually, maybe I could create something here. And that's what I started doing. So I started getting people in who uh, had 10, 15 years experience, who knew load more than me. And then I then said to them, look, you know more than me, please. Like, you run the job. You, you know, you, you lead me on the job. And I'm going to get the work in. And that's kind of how it sort of ro started rolling. So I was really good at going out. Like, I went out. Uh, so before I, when I first started I was going out to estate agents a lot and I remember like over the course of a couple of days I can't remember it was 50, 60 something like that estate agents across North London where I was living I just went out dropping in my business card walking in saying hello hi I'm Winston um, you know gas engineer would love to get you know do some business with you and you know you know, get involved in the heating work to you doing gas safety certificates whatever it is that you need us for and out of all of those um, out of all of those 60 odd estate agents that I went into, two of them um, used, used me. One of them used me for about six months and it was just giving me, a, you know, and some kind of income. And then one of them I walked into, given the spiel, and he was like, yeah, all right then. He goes, uh, and he pulled out a set of basin tax. He goes, how much would it be to set, fit a set of these in my, in my house? And uh, he goes, I want a good deal though if you're going to do some business with me. And um, I, I can't remember I charged him 50 quid or something. And it was miles away as well. It wasn't even in London. <laughs> and, um, and anyway, so I drove off to his house that night, changed the taps. Um, but the mad thing is, that was like 10 years ago. And actually last night, 8 o'clock last night, that same guy rang me. He's got a problem in one of his properties. And he's used me on and off, you know, for the last 10 years 
as he's needed to and yeah. recommended me to several different other people. So it's like, again, you know, if you're willing to do things that others don't do, then you can then gain things like that. Yeah. So that's how it's, that's, that's how it really it sort of grew was me going out getting work, getting in guys that were much better than me, much more knowledgeable than me and bringing them in to help do the work. And then once we got to a size where we were doing, so we started getting in like hotels and schools and, and large, large uh, residential. It was to a point where even managing wise, I was kind of out of my depths. So then I brought in people that had experience in commercial work who had work experience both managing and working. And then eventually had like, two project managers, managing, girl in the office, part-time accountant, and then me going around doing what I'm, I'm doing. And that's literally really speaking to customers, showing up and, and building the brand and, and the business. Yeah. Um, but that was all great. And um, we've got loads of things wrong. Don't, don't think it was all plain sailing because I've got loads of things wrong. You know, we had floods, had one flood, cost me 13 grand. The day I was supposed to be finishing the job, uh, went there on a Monday morning and, and, you know, had left the water on overnight and one of the guys had left the, the uh, insulation jacket in the cold water storage tank in the loft and hadn't fixed the overflow properly. Ah, so- <laughs> Kept the ball valve down and the tank literally, it was the worst feeling going at six in the morning. Oh, heard the alarms going off and these two new builds. And I was like, what's that? Opened the door and, and the light fitting in, in, the, in, the hall, in, in the hallway looked like a shower. And I was just like, oh, the worst no. feeling, the worst feeling. Like, where do I go to first? <laughs> like, stop, stop, <laughs> tank. What do I do? And I'm brimming, out, I'm brimming water out of the, the hallway stairs, down the stairs, trying to get the water out. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, so, you know, so that, you know, it, 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 was, but it was a real good learning curve, all of that, doing what I was doing. And then got to um, End of 2014, booked a nice family holiday for Christmas, just finished a 106-room hotel down in Croydon, and, you know, life was, was good. Um, but then this hotel, they owed us 73 grand on our final account, load of it was extras, and the week before I'm due to fly out on this a proper holiday, they've offered me 13 grand settlement. And I was just like, what? And I remember thinking, this, what is this? I didn't understand it. And... I ended up. Lead Hero is the UK's number one marketing automation platform for ambitious trades businesses looking to save time, make more money, and level up. Because just getting leads is not enough anymore. Lead Hero will help you triple your sales and maximize profits with our job flow acceleration system. Visit leadhero.ai to learn more trying to negotiate with them uh, like you know what look just give me 40 i think it's 43 grand i wanted a 44 grand and just give me that and then um you know i just won't i won't go for the rest of it because i just needed that money to pay the guys you know yeah. going away um anyway didn't pay me so come back from holiday january i started um adjudication uh, proceedings against them and because again this is back of lack of understanding of the industry and naivety I was running effectively a contracting company, but didn't understand contracts. And I didn't put down net sum due on the bottom of my, my valuations. And because I had been negotiating with them for a lower figure, the adjudicator basically couldn't award us the money and said basically that, that they had won the adjudication. So then, so then I spent all the money going to the adjudication. So the next day I couldn't stop. And this is, this is now like February now, end of February. The next day, I started another adjudication, but with the lower amount which I'd been negotiating with net sum due, and they paid up. But by the end of it, I'd lost 40 grand. Oh. And that kind of was the, 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 the sort of beginning of the end because my, my, I should have at that point said, you know what, we've got to close up. We can't, you know, cannot continue like this. Still had good contracts started coming in, like, like, like a hundred grand contract, 200. We had good contracts coming in, but I was like, at that point, I should have stopped and then restarted as another business. But my ego and actually wanted to do the right thing, even though it was like people like Woolsey and, and companies like that that we owed money to, I was like, I wanted to pay them. Yeah. Um, and then 2016, I nearly sold the business. Um, and I had a, a company we did a lot of subcontracting for, got on really well with them. But ultimately, I just couldn't bring myself to – to, to relinquish control, I suppose, and let it go. 
So I turned that down. And then within six months, literally the business just crumbled, you know, lack of control. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that was that it. Must and, have, and, and, that must have been, I mean, I've been through a similar thing. I lost a business and um, it's, it takes its toll, doesn't it? Do you know, emotionally mm, and like mm, bravado wise, because mm-hmm. like, I'm guessing wherever mm-hmm. you were, you were the kingpin, do you know, you were like this man that's got mm-hmm. this, that's built this mm-hmm. like awesome business. <laughs> everything's great. And yeah. then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, shit, tail between the leg. Uh, yeah. I, I wasn't as yeah. good as everyone thought. Um, and I, yeah, I it, yeah, it knocked yeah. me big time. I spent, I spent, Same. I spent probably two years. I reckon it took me mm. to get over it. And like, I mm. never really, like shared it with my people around me, if you know what I mean. It was mm, more of like yeah. an inner battle that yeah. I just like. It was just yeah, I just I just it just it it was close to ruining me. But luckily, I 100%. I found self development and and personal development and and all of that comes with that sort of positivity and 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 mm. and, and basically rebuilt from there. So 100%. obviously from, from that then, what, what would you say a couple of key lessons to, to anyone out there that, that is either on their journey to there or maybe struggling right now in, in a business that, that isn't mm. going well? Would, is there any key mm. bits of advice you'd, you'd give? So I think anyone that's building a business, like building a business of size or any, it doesn't really matter about size, but building any kind of business particularly obviously in our industry the massive massive thing which i'm like i'm so on now is having control so knowing where your guys are knowing how long they've worked knowing what material they've used you know understanding your numbers understanding what you're doing because without control you know it's like we're we're we was bringing in 100 grand a month but 110 110 grand's going out so yeah. it's like so it's like, well, great, but it doesn't, doesn't bring you nothing. So a massive thing is, is definitely for me is about control. That you've, got to, you've got to try and maintain as much control as you can. Obviously, it's always variable. It's always things that go wrong. And actually, go, that brings on to that. You know, you've got to be flexible. That when things do go wrong, that um, one, you handle it in the right way. So if someone calls you up, for me, if someone calls me up, even it could be a year, two, three years down the line, and something's not been right about something we've done, I always tell customers, I'm going to handle this head on. I'm not yeah. going to hide from you. I'm always going to answer the phone. I'm going to deal with this head on. What shall we do from here? What do you want us to do from here? How can we move forward? And I think that's a key thing generally in life. Like If you handle things head on, you don't lie, you tell the truth, you, know, you can't do any more than tell the truth. You can't uh, trip yourself up if you tell the truth, can you? Nah, you know? it just it just it just it just is what it is. So then, so then you know, like if you're dealing with dealing things in the right way, people will respect that, and people will be more inclined rather than to write you a bad review or to get gas safe on your case or to 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 do anything that to try and harm you. They'll be more inclined to go. Do you know, what, actually, let's give this guy a break or let's try and work with him to yeah. to solve it. So, um, and yeah, I've got definitely. a prime example of that this week. Uh, well, last week now, sorry, should I say? Right. Okay. Uh, one of my lads burnt a carpet, right? Yeah. So, yeah. literally, as soon as I found out, rang the customer, said, Look, mm. we've had a problem. We like, I sent him pictures because we dust sheet and we have the mm. sticky stuff on the carpet. Yeah, I said, yeah, we yeah, took yeah, precautions, yeah. but yeah. shit's happened. Do you know? Yeah. It's somehow yeah. burnt through. I yeah. said, Don't panic. Let the lads focus on getting the job done. Get yeah. the job done. Go yeah. and get yourself a quote from Carpet Right for a new carpet. Yeah. Send me the bill, do you know, and let's let we'll just get it done. Let's 100%. let's not affect anything. Let's just get this sorted. 100%. You know, five star review. I got a five star review yesterday morning. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But and but the thing is, is like I said, like it's an easy one for people to think. Oh no, nah, but if I just ignore the person, they might go away. Yeah. Or if I just hide, if I just hide from it, you know, it will be all right. And it's like that's the difference. That's that's what separates you know yourself from people that are middle ground. If yeah. you want to be exceptional and. I suppose it goes on to an, another thing for me, which I'm massive on, is service. When you read some of the reviews that we get, often people talk about service. And actually, I was, talk, I was with someone last week. We were doing a, a small job there, but but I uh, she's an existing customer, so I went round just to say hello while the guys were doing the work. And and I spoke for her for a half an hour, and she said, "Do you know what, Winston?" She said, "Your work's all right." He goes, "You know, you you do a good job." He goes, "Do you know what separates you?" He goes, "It's your service." Because you always answer the phone. You turn up when you say you're going to turn up. You do what you say you're going to do. 
and you're a decent person to speak to. Yeah. And that's what separates you. And I think if you can find things which make, and it goes back to what I heard last night, you was on that live. What makes you special? What makes you unique? Yeah. So you're not competing with everyone else on price and, and run of the mill. What's part of your story makes you different? You know, what yeah. can you bring to the table that goes, actually, do you know what? You know, whether you've been in the army or whether you've got an experience with elderly people or you've got children. Children is a, like a, always a, 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 not an easy one, but a, a great communication starter. Yeah. You walk in, you know, husband, husband and wife, like, I work domestic now, walk in, husband and wife standing there and between their legs comes a three or four year old. You're like, oh, hello, you're all right. And, you know, and the next conversation then leads on to, oh, you know, you're, you're just like one of mine. I've got, I've got yeah. some of you at home. And, oh, how many children have you got? And it's an easy conversation starter. It so, breaks that <clears throat> ice, doesn't it? hundred percent, hundred percent. So it's kind of like, if you can have control, deal with things head on with integrity and deliver a service which makes you a real person and not just another company, like that can take you just from being average to a, a different kind of level. Uh, mate, I, I, we're literally singing from the same sheet. I, I run, um, I have clients on a, uh, a program that I've developed. I called it mm. the No Excuses uh, Transformation mm. Program. Mm. And mm. we basically, we, it's, a, it's a month program that they work with me on. And it's basically about getting control of their current situation, mm. you know, making some structure on how to mm. do that. Because it's mm. all well and good saying keep on top of, your finances um, it's how do you know and, and yeah. making them do it do you know get zero yeah. get quickbooks whatever it might yeah. be do you know actually yeah. use it and that's the key take yeah. action and use it because i speak 100%. to so many guys that pay 25 30 quid a month for zero but they yeah. don't touch it do you know? yeah, <laughs> they, don't, yeah, they yeah. don't use it they don't know the wealth and the, inf- the knowledge mm. that they've got at the end of that mm. screen if they implemented yeah. it um, 100%. some people just need a um some people just need ushering, you know, like, like herding into the right path, don't they? And uh, this, this is one of the reasons I do these, these, these podcasts and the live uh-huh. you mentioned last night is uh-huh. because the people listening, if they can just take one or two lessons away from it, mm. you know, and hopefully it will improve what they're doing and, and, and hopefully ultimately stop them being in a position where we've been, like where we've been on mm. our knees with the businesses not working mm. and stuff. Mm. Um, so now then what with regards to moving on from, from obviously the low of losing your business, um, you've re you've rebuilt, but I'm guessing in a, in a smaller way. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. So, so, so now like I used to think bigger was better (laughs) and actually, and actually, um, I've, I've, and I've realigned my value. So like, I was so busy trying to build this company and trying to chase money that I kind of lost sight of what was important to me. So I know we've been back there, but I'll just touch it slightly. When, just before I got out, I wrote a list of all the things that I wanted in life. And there was a list of like 17 things. And on those things, um, most of them were about, I wanted a wife, I wanted children, I wanted to help people, I wanted to give back. There was, and there was a couple of things of, I wanted to build a business. I wanted a, a, a house. Um, and I have to comment what I was. So one other thing I wanted. But anyway, but most of them didn't cost any money. Yeah. But, but I, on my journey, I got so preoccupied in building this, this business and kind of like it was propping up my ego that I lost sight of lots of the other things which I also wanted. Yeah. so when i when i when i um lost it all and like said your ego takes a hit and you're like wow like i'm out on my feet here and you're like literally i'm like someone help me and and when you get to that point of just going i'm just a man i just want to do the best i can i just want to be a decent father i just want to be a good husband i just want to try and do my best i can for other people then when you're at that point life actually becomes so much easier and then I was like, well, look, I, I've got, I still got this skill set. You know, I don't have this big company. And I was like, well, let's just, I borrowed a couple of grand to buy a van. And let's just, 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 I had to provide. So let's just go and provide. And I had no intentions of building a business. Um, but just in doing what I do in my ethos of life, things have slowly started to, to build again. Um, but, while I'm, I've been doing that, I've been real, real careful in not losing sight of what I want and what's important yeah. to me and who I am, yeah, and what my happiness means. Because 
bigger is not always better and it very rarely is and actually my happiness and my wealth does not come from how much money i've got in the bank it comes yeah. from again how good a father i am how good a husband i am and what can i contribute back to others hence hence why massively i've pushed on the father stuff and the and the um the help and the, the, the young youth and the disadvantaged youngsters. That's how I've pushed on that because I'm kind of like, going, well, wait, wait, where's your balance? How many zeros do you, do you need in your bank account to make you happy? And what are they going to give you when you die? Because we're all going to die. We're all on our way to death. It's all happening, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, whenever it's going to happen, you're going to die. We're all going to die. So how many of them zeros are going to help you in your coffin? None of them. So, um, so that is so important, form. man. That is like so important. So anyone listening here, rewind and re-listen to that little bit of uh, of the show because the extra zeros that you mentioned, you know, when you get there, you're just going to want more zeros. You're just going to mm-hmm. want more, 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 mm-hmm. more of mm-hmm. this number. And like you say, mm-hmm. that's not going to give you anything. You know, Mm -hmm. the time you are, the time you spend with your children, your wife, that those Mm -hmm. around you, your family, Mm -hmm. friends, and and more importantly, like what you're doing to other people, because Mm -hmm. not everyone, not everyone's blessed like us. You know, we, Mm -hmm. we, we're creators, you know, we make stuff Mm -hmm. happen. It's in our nature. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some people haven't discovered that in themselves yet, you know, Mm -hmm. and and don't even Mm -hmm. know that that's a possibility. So being able to assist those people you know is is so 100%. so important and i've started 100%. to do it i i last year i did a couple of talks at a couple of local high schools for the nice. year 10s that are going to go into their gcse nice. years nice. i'm doing a live a live two-hour session with them in um gosh when is it i think it might be in january for the okay, current nice. years that and nice. and it's it's only small things, you know. It's a couple of hours yeah. out of my day. Yeah. But I know, hopefully, you know, I know if I can make a difference to a couple of them people in that room, hundred percent, and just light up something in them, um, or give them some bit of advice. It just, yeah, I'm not going to earn any money. It it will probably cost me money because I'm out mm-hmm. of what I got to do. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Money isn't money isn't the most important value to me. Do you know? And hundred percent. There's there's so much more ahead of money money you have Mm. to have money in this modern world that is you Mm -hmm. know unfortunately Mm -hmm. the world Mm -hmm. we live in it's part of it but you don't need endless money you know you need to be able you need enough money to support the things that you want to do and having Mm. clarity on that is one of the most important aspects isn't it so you know you know now what's important so you know you don't want a million pound obviously if you get a million pound in the bank great but you're not going to put that above the time with your children, the time with your wife, the time with helping these other yeah, communities. hundred percent. It's not a priority above any of those things. Yeah. And actually the, the, the real interesting thing I've learned this last year and a half is actually the more times that, that I've spent giving to other people and the more time I've spent trying to do things for others, the more actually things have come back into my life. Like Law of attraction, like, isn't it? Like we're doing what we're doing now. We, we would not have been doing this had I not have been active doing what I, I'm, yeah. I've been doing. And it's like in so many different ways, things have happened. And it's like I said, in even terms of, and you talk about uh, financially, my business has been growing. I think kind of, for me, it's a reflection of value. So I yeah. have, I understand the value of myself. And by me, having all these things which I do and I'm aware of and I've built within my, my body of self, when I'm going into a home, I kind of get this feeling that people understand that value. It gets communicated to them on, on some different levels because you, you've, when you've got a wealth of things that you, you do and talk about and, 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 and are outside of just your business, people are like, oh, wow, like, who is this person? And, yeah. and you know what, if they do all of these different things and or they are all these different things and, and I can really see that value in them, then do you know what? I want them to give them that value in my home and I'm willing to pay them a little bit more for that yeah. to give me that value. Yeah, I yeah, I, I 100%, 100% agree, 100% agree. So let's, um, we, we're getting towards the hour mark, but there's still a few yeah. things I'd like to, I'd like to try, and, <laughs> try and get out. So you do a bit of acting. Um, yeah. So I think you mentioned you did that as a kid as well. So do you want to yeah. just explain a little bit about what you've yeah, done yeah. and what, what's got you into that sort of scene? Yeah. So, I mean, look, I just, I just took to it. I was, you know, 11, 12 year old or whatever, whatever I was. And 
and I just I always enjoy sort of just jumping around. And then when I when I I went I think it might have been secondary school I was put into a school play, and I was just like, wow, this is cool. I really liked it. And then I started doing um, like uh, Saturday drama school and during the week as well. And when I was about fourteen, I went off to Ireland and did some performance over there. And I was just like, yeah, do you know what? I really, really like this. And that's why I did my A-levels in um, drama for performing arts. Um, so it's been a lifelong sort of thing from a young age in me. But then as I got to being a late teenager and, you know, doing whatever I was doing, that was kind of like the end of that, you know, what me, me with the ego that I thought I needed and the persona I thought I needed bowling down the street didn't go well with me standing <laughs> there. You know, in some tights and yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't quite it didn't quite work. So I kind of dropped that. And then I'll it was about probably about uh eight years ago, something like that now. Um I just felt I was feeling a bit empty. You know, I had the business that started to go and the business was doing all right, but I felt an emptiness inside of myself because I was just working and coming home, working and coming home. And and I was all this suddenly come to me, I was like, Do you know what? I'm gonna start doing my acting again. So I said to my wife, I said, you know what? I'm thinking about getting back into acting. And she's like, well, why do you want to do that? I mean, you know, you're not going to become Brad Pitt or anyone. And I was just like, huh? Like, and it was like a low blow to me. So I was just like, okay, no worries. Didn't say anything, just kept quiet. So then for the next like nine months, I, I started sneaking off doing acting classes without telling my wife. So I, was, so I, would, I would literally tell my admin girl, put the phone on to um, for, uh, for call, forward calls. And then during the day, I'll go off, do a couple of hours of acting classes and then not say anything. Okay. But it come to a head because my wife was uh, pregnant with, um, my wife was pregnant with uh, my, my youngest and we went to the hospital and they were, no, actually what happened? So I had, an, I had an audition. I went to meet a friend who was a casting agent and they were like, look, let me take some photos of you. So took some photos of me. This is on a Friday morning. Friday afternoon, he messaged me, said, yeah, I've got you an audition. And I said, oh, who's that for? They said, oh, it's Game of Thrones. And I was like, Game of Thrones? I said, what's that? She's like, Google it. Anyway, so I went to the audition. And then on the Friday, um, the sort of week later, she messaged said, oh, you've been penciled for it. So I was like, what's that mean? She goes, you might, you might have got it. I was like, okay. So then a Sunday, me and my wife went to hospital. And they said, your baby is going to come early. We're going to do a cesarean on Tuesday. So that's two days time. On the Monday, uh, my agent rang me and was like, yeah, you got the gig you've got to fly to Croatia tomorrow. And I was like, I was like, tomorrow is in Tuesday tomorrow. She was like, yeah, tomorrow. And I was like, ah, yeah. so, so then, so then I had to basically go and talk to my, my wife and it's basically come clean and say what I've been doing. And, um, you know, a few choice words and that. And then I called back my agent and basically in long story short, they ended up letting me stay for the birth on the Tuesday. And then on yeah. the Wednesday, early hours, I flew out to Croatia. And wow. yeah, five five days on Game of Thrones, so that was like yeah, whirlwind week, like best best week. I bet. Wow, whirlwind, <laughs> whirlwind. Um, and then since then, yeah, I've just done lots of little bits and pieces, you know, a few <laughs> like few few British films, commercials. I did a play a few years ago down in Brighton. That was really cool. Played oh, the schizophrenic cool. down there, um, and yeah, just you know, it's just a passion of mine. I just in, like people might play golf, people might do whatever they do. I love acting. I love it, you know, and I, I think I'll always do that for, for till the day I die. You know, yeah. write. I've been doing a lot of writing during lockdown because there's not, not really much filming that's been going on. And, you know, I just enjoy doing it. And whether I do it professionally or I just do it just because, then it's fine because yeah. I enjoy it. Yeah, and that, yeah, that, that's good. Like, so, yeah, it's your passion. You, you, it's something that you love to do and, and mm. no, that's really good. That's really good. Um, there, there's still so much I want to talk about, man. I think we might have to book up another yeah. another show. If you, if you could spare me another 45 minutes or an hour, yeah, we'll get a cool. part two to this because yeah, no worries, um, no worries. generally, uh, from a selfish point of view, I don't want to waste the content because it's so yeah. valuable that's and cool. people gem- generally nod off by this time of a show like yeah, the, yeah, the, course, it, yeah. an hour is really the maximum that people sort of yeah. engage with so yeah I, I think i'm gonna call it call it a day there yeah um but if it's okay with you we're gonna get scheduled in for a part two because yeah you've got good. lots of questions i want i want to ask you about <laughs> like your, your father for right stuff that you that you're yeah, involved in yeah 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 um the the work you did with regards to the the speeches that you that you yeah, did with yeah, regards yeah, yeah. to the black lives matter movement yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and just everything that's, that comes around all of that. So 
Cool. Um, is there anything specifically before we wrap up that you want to sort of get out there to, 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 to anybody? How can they follow you? Anything like that? Oh, right. Yeah, no, you can. Uh, Winston Davis just on Facebook. Winston Davis one on Instagram. Okay. You know, just follow me, connect. You know, I think like as men, we, uh, and I say men because I'm, I'm, I know there's women are watching as well, but, uh, you know, like we, um, we feel, you know, like we shouldn't reach out to people and we shouldn't yeah. connect. And it's like, no, let's connect. Let's, you know, we're just humans. I said earlier, we're going to die soon. So like, if you've got something of value that you want to talk about or something you want to discuss, like reach out to people, you know, like me and you only, only connected from us, one of us reaching out to each other. Yeah. And, and here, here we are. If you don't take, take a risk, then there's nothing to gain. Exactly. So, yeah, that's I'll, that's I'll some good that. advice there. Yeah, no, that's really, really good. So thanks again for everyone listening. And Thank there's you. definitely going to be a part two. Um, God bless everyone. Have a good day. Yeah. Top man. Cheers. Speak to you soon, mate. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. This episode was brought to you by Off The Tools. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Um, I just wanted to pull it out there for anyone listening that I offer business coaching but also life coaching. My life is centered around something called the three B's, which stands for body, business, and balance. When you work with me as a coach, we tackle all three aspects of life. So you as an individual, body, mindset, health, fitness, knowledge, education, Business B obviously stands for your business, improving, maximizing opportunities, elevating, making more money. And balance stands for your for friends, family, loved ones, you know, making time for everything in your life. And the three Bs is the core element to that. If you'd like to learn more, I would ask you to reach out to me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you might be consuming my information. Um, or you can email me directly at wayne at offthetools.co.uk. I'm here waiting to assist you to elevate across all aspects of life. Have a good one. No excuses. Let's go.